Welcome to the Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast, where each week we're joined by leaders of Guaranteed Irish member businesses to chat about how they sustain jobs, communities and provenance. Supported by FBD Insurance, Ireland's largest homegrown insurer. Support. It's what we do. Hello and welcome to the Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast. Hi there, I'm Reid O'Connell and joining me today is Patrick Farrell, Retail Banking Director of Permanent TSB, to discuss their business banking strategy, the SME landscape in Ireland and the winners of today's Guaranteed Irish Business Awards. You're very welcome, Patrick. Thanks, Breed. Now, founded in 1816 as the Irish Savings Bank in Waterford, a massive history here in Ireland, obviously the headquarters are now in Dublin, and you're employing well over 2,000 peop- uh, people at the moment. Tell us, in a nutshell, all about permanent TSB at the moment and how where, where is that in terms of banking in Ireland? Well, look, we've been around, just as you said, we've been around for over 200 years. Um, we did start in Waterford and then Cork and Limerick, Monaghan and Dublin Savings Banks. And then the Irish Permanent uh, kicked in. And between the amalgamation of those businesses, and we were with Irish Life for a period as well uh, during our history. So we're, we're a conglomerate, I suppose, of, of many businesses coming together over different years. But we've one thing probably in common, which is people based in local communities um, where we focus on making sure those communities thrive, that local businesses can start up, can grow, um, and we're supporting those local businesses to create employment and also supporting local people to actually just achieve things they want in life, like getting a home or Mm. educating their kids. Uh, So really simple stuff, but it's the really important stuff to customers. And I suppose our, like, you know, our, 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 advantage or our, our competitive uh, advantage is really around how we invest in our, our own staff. As you say, we've, we've almost now nearly 3,000 staff because we've had a lot of staff join us of from course, Ulster Bank. Yes, yeah. um, and we're hugely training those people to not only be professional bankers and to be well qualified to give advice, but actually just to develop that empathy with their local community, to actually live in their community, sleep, eat, drink, be at football and GA and matches at the weekend and walking clubs and reading clubs. So not just to be the bankers in the community, but actually to get involved in the community and make those and communities work. It strikes me, Patrick, that the permanent TSP staff are much, um, I hate to say this now, but there's a real homeliness to them yeah. in the sense of the old branch where you're going, going in and meeting people. They seem to be woven into every walk of life. That's kind of part of the DNA of permanent TSP. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, like we, we encourage it hugely. So like if you think of all of us, uh, depending on our stage of life, like at my, even myself, I have three young kids. So at weekends, it's GA matches, hockey matches, football matches. <laughs> um, so you're involved in the local community, the local clubs. Of course. And we encourage our staff to actually, not only, we actually give, you know, we'll put money behind it as well to encourage staff to get involved locally um, because that's where the community comes together, gets to know each other, helps each other. Um, and we want our, our team not to just literally open the bank Monday to Friday, but we actually, at, even at weekends, we want them to represent permanent mm. TSB. Um, Living the brand. For what we stand for yeah. and actually help the community to actually function and work. Real engagement. Now, the permanent TSB is the first bank ever to be awarded the Guaranteed Irish symbol. It captures what you're after talking to me about. What has that meant to the bank and your work? Yeah, like we're, it, it's been huge for us because we're, we're an Irish bank that's we're the only Irish bank that's domestically focused fully like we don't have any business interests outside of the 26 counties um so that means we're fully invested here um we see ourselves as a significant Irish company supporting significant Irish companies and businesses right around the country and that's everybody from you know the sole trader who's out on their own right through to kind of family businesses and even some of the bigger uh, businesses that are out there as well, but really focused on being an Irish business supporting Irish businesses. And that again goes back to building those local micro economies, those local communities, creating employment, letting money circulate within the economy, and then everybody benefits. But it's the Irish aspect of it, I suppose, we're quite proud of. Now, we're, we're a, we are a diverse group within mm-hmm. that. So we have multi nationalities working within our group. But we have that, I suppose, Irish ethos of where we know our customers well at a local level and we're invested in them being successful. And if they're successful, 
will be successful. Of course. What, what go through and come through, as I say. Um, you have a lot of other partnerships and um, you're involved, as you say, in the communities with those partnerships. I have to compliment you on your Olympic a sponsorship. Talk to us a little bit about that because you're the first bank or the first sponsor ever to, to uh, partner and, and support equally the Olympics and the Paralympics. A huge coup and something that really got noted and noticed by people. Yeah, look, we're, it's, it's a fantastic sponsorship for us because, again, it roots us in the community. But also these athletes, they're phenomenal people. Like they're, you know, I've had the pleasure of interviewing a number of them uh, over the last kind of six months. And what I what I'm struck by all of them is they're they're ordinary people, but they're doing extraordinary things uh, and they need our support and help. So that's why we're so delighted to be involved. And they actually bring so much joy and pride Mm. to the country, but also to their hometowns. I mean, you saw when Kelly won gold before and she's coming back and our whole community was lifted by that fact and indeed the whole country was lifted by and great it. ambassadors for permanent tfb of course then phenomenal ambassadors um like so and even on the the paralympic side so like we've people like jordan lee again you know who's a phenomenal athlete i don't know if people how familiar people are with him but this is is a man um who is an absolutely outstanding high jumper but he's also a phenomenal long jumper and and he also played basketball for ireland able-bodied basketball for ireland as well as playing for Ireland in soccer underage as well, able-bodied. So this is a man who has, it's all about ability and not disability, and he's embraced that. So when I look at any of the athletes, you know, Dara Green, the swimmer as well, Sarah Lavin, the, the, the sprinter, these are role models for the country oh, for sure. and they're for people that young kids can look up to and aspire to be. And they really are the best of Irish people. And I think the big applause for me anyway is looking at the equality you brought to that, where you brought equal sponsorship to both the Olympians and the Paralympians, which was never done before. And thank goodness for it. It's great to see it in a modern Ireland at long last that sponsor is thinking about the full picture. And well done to Permanent TSB for that. I'm going to talk to you now, uh, Patrick, about banking because you know back in the day bankers weren't always the most popular and of course that has changed we need our banking systems we need our bankers talk to us about your business banking strategy in permanent tsb yeah so like i I talk about our our strategy in 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 general i think society do does need banks um it's it's important that we as bankers understand the role we play but also that people understand why are banks useful so just even back to basic financial budgeting and understanding and financial literacy there's such in in places there's such a gap in in people's knowledge about just even managing the household budget every month right through then to how do i educate the kids versus putting food on the table particularly in high inflation times but then also as they people go through their careers how do they save for that if they want to buy that first home how do they then actually even though people are young how do they plan for their retirement their future And I suppose what I would say, if you're, whether you're, you know, a a person who's planning their life as as an individual, or whether you're somebody who has a dream of starting and running their own business, you need help and advice at at big moments in that journey. And I suppose our role really um, is to be there locally for you to advise you. Yes, technology has impacted banking in a huge way, largely positively. Um, but for me, it's not all about digital capability. It's important we give people the technology they want to make it easy to do business. But the real secret here for me is that we have just as much investment in our people so that when somebody can do the day to day themselves on their phone or online, but when they really need to talk to somebody to make that step to say, you know what, I'm going to expand the business. I'm going to start exporting abroad. Uh, that's a really big decision to make. And actually having somebody like a banker who can go through the numbers with you and advise you is now the right time or what might you need to do differently or structure it better so that actually you're not putting your business or your family at risk. So I would say to people, you know, yes, banks have made mistakes um, uh, in the past, but we are a, we are a crucial part of making the economy work and we're there for you. And if you come and talk to us, we, you know, we'll engage with you because we're invested in you doing well and being a success. And it's our job really to make sure that businesses all around the country in every one of the hundred communities we're in, you know, thrive. And if they thrive, um, Ireland just works. And, yeah. and we have a job as a, as a company 
to really step up and play our part in making sure Ireland is a success. And I think that's great to hear and reassuring because so many people are still looking for that. Uh, digital is obviously critical, but in terms of that one to one and that little bit of a an egg on and a little bit of support on a personal piece and permanent GSP seem to be quite strong on that. So well done and keep it up because people want to see people. We've all learned that from COVID. I need to ask you um, the big acquisition at the moment and the move with the Ulster Bank transaction impact on your strategies and position on the market. How's that working out and how's it going? Huge it's, job. It's been a huge job. It's been a great, it's been a fun time. Um, obviously, just has it really been a fun time now, Patrick? It's been really stressful. <laughs> It has like we've we've um, just like even in my own part of the business, you know, we've just opened 25 new branches in parts of the country we'd never been in before. Brilliant. Um, We've taken 350 new colleagues on board from from Ulster Bank. That's quite exciting, exciting because they bring new perspectives, new ways of doing things, good energy, and it helps evolve our culture even further again. Um, We've also, I suppose, brought a lot of mortgage customers over. So 58,000 mortgage customers have joined us which again is really important and even more exciting, I suppose, by the half year, um, the Lombard Asset Finance business will come over and, and rebrand as permanent TSB Asset Finance. And again, that's a very successful business and will allow us to actually offer asset finance solutions to the business market in Ireland. So I'm really excited about that. Um, it really builds out our proposition for, for SMEs and making sure that we can help them in all aspects of their business. And in terms of digitization, we touched off it a little earlier and the customer first approach. Um, there are two key areas of focus in your m- more recent years. How is permanent TSB thinking about it at the moment and where is the next step there? Yeah, there's a, there's a load happening. Like we've invested 150 million in digital over the last two years, actually 18 months. Um, but it doesn't stop there. I mean, the, the actual digital advancement will keep going. We can see that customers are moving to things like contactless payments, Apple and Google Pay. Uh, We have a new app due out in the next number of months as well, which again will really help customers to do an awful lot more themselves. So things that they might have had to phone or write to the bank on previously, they'll now be able to do in their app. So it's all about trying to make it easy for people to do business because as well as it being difficult times with inflation, people are also time poor, particularly if they're running a business. They don't necessarily always have time to come to the branch to talk to us. So we need to enable them to do more. All of our product journeys at this point are digitized, but we've more to do in that area as well. So again, it's to allow customers to be able to engage with us and apply for something should they need it digitally. And then, as I say again, the human aspect comes in when somebody needs advice along that journey but it's important we try and take the paperwork out we take the hassle and and, and make it easier for people to do business but also then having the right people at the right time there to advise you on what's the most suitable course for you so a very busy 21 22 start of 23 what's for the rest of 23 and 24 in terms of permanent tsb and its evolution yeah well obviously when you bring in new people as i said and you bring in new businesses that's a big evolution of our of our all overall banking proposition to the market. Look, we're we're very ambitious. We c- we want to grow our business, but we want to grow it in the right way. Uh, and for us, the right way really is is it's back to our purpose. You know, it's all about building trust with customers. And trust is hard to build, and it's easily broken. Um, but I suppose we want to be judged by our actions. You know, action by action, that we want to rebuild that trust with customers. Say, you know what. Bankers are on your side. They're there with you locally. You can see them. You can talk to them. Uh, they want to be there to help you during the good times and the bad times and, and in the difficult times. So we're going to continue with that strategy of rolling out competitive and good technology, but great people to support you on that journey. Uh, we want to grow our business in the Irish market. Uh, there, are, you know, there are a couple of other competitors in the market, but we, we certainly want to make life as interesting for them as we possibly can and create great competition, particularly for small and medium businesses around the country. We think there's a gap in the market with Ulster Bank and KBC leaving, and we want to fill that gap and we want to be there to support small and medium businesses as they grow their businesses over the next number of years. On that exact note, we've seen here in Guaranteed Irish an uplift on applications from small Irish businesses to join Guaranteed Irish. 
Are you seeing, and, and there's quite a lot of volatility still in the market with the uncertainty and, and logistics and supply chains and all that. And it's possibly because we're buying a little bit more at home and there's a lot more local push. Are you seeing more businesses start up and more enterprises and small businesses growing out there in the community where you're involved? Yeah, there's definitely more businesses starting and growing. And I think out of COVID, you know, people at home when they were th- had a bit of time to think um, actually went for that idea that they always wondered yeah. should they start their own business so we've seen quite a lot of that happen which is great to see you know it has been a difficult time for businesses as well sure. particularly with the increased cost of running the business over the last kind of 12 months and you know so some sectors they still have a difficult period for the next kind of six to 12 months we we believe to go through but we have seen i suppose anyone who starts a business is brave i came from a family business myself originally in, in the farming and agri side and it's brave to start a business. And, yeah. it, and I think these people are very brave. There's never a good time or an easy time to start mm-hmm. a business. But I suppose if you have a good idea and you have a good plan, and if you want a, a good banker to help mm-hmm. you develop that plan, then give us a shout because we'd really like to help oh, you. That's a really nice thing to say. And in terms of the permanent TSB, you're the title sponsor once again of the Guaranteed Irish Business Awards for 2023. What does it mean to you personally to be supporting Irish businesses, large and small? And how advantageous, if any, <laughs> is it to be the sponsor of Guaranteed Irish Business Awards? Uh, look, it's. It, I suppose... It, for us, because we see ourselves as a guaranteed Irish business, um, it means a lot to us. Um, but obviously, we're you know we're a, a sizable company in the Irish market and we're doing well. But we we see an opportunity to help the guaranteed Irish group of companies to grow. You know, we believe strongly that if Irish companies do well and the Irish economy does well, that everybody does well. So we're hugely invested in it. Um, we do believe it's very aligned with our our purpose of supporting and serving those local communities and building trust with those customers. So for us, it's it's a phenomenal sponsorship. We're delighted with it, Breed, uh, and long may it continue. Well, thanks for that, pa- uh, Patrick. And uh, it's been a really good match for us as well because it's about uh, supporting local at the end of the day. Okay, so Patrick, be honest. What did you think of the winners this year? What was the standard like? What did you think of the applications and the actual overall winners? Look, I, I really enjoyed going through the applications like I did last year as well. It actually, it amazes me what kind of businesses we have out there. I don't think we fully appreciate, particularly some of the kind of the Irish and even the family-based type organizations that we have in the country. This was one that really stood out for me because it's it's a product I use myself, which was Revive Active. Um, like, again, you know, when, do you know when you're feeling a bit low and you're, you're, you're <laughs> the, the immune system needs a boost? Um, and I know it's a it's a great West of Ireland company and uh, it's a fantastic product. And I've delighted to see actually how they've grown from strength to strength well, over the last number that. of years. They've been an amazing success story and they've out of small acorns. There's a really good success story and they the product works, I believe. So well, it works for me anyway, <laughs> so I, I can I can testify that it works. But also you have the likes of Mangard there as well. Again, it's a really phenomenal Irish company. And when you look at how they compete in their sector, versus a lot of big international uh, kind of conglomerates and they they beat the socks off them they really are a, a fantastic company again doing great things in the irish market so i think we we are spoiled for choice really in in some of the the companies that have come through but it's great to see and i think really you know looking ahead even in the years ahead it's about encouraging more businesses to put themselves forward because actually irish people and irish businesses we are a little bit you know, we don't necessarily put ourselves out there to sure. say, look, actually, do you know what? We're doing fantastic things. But you can see that some of these companies are not only doing great things domestically, but some of them now are actually really competing on an international basis. And that's also fantastic to see that, you know, something that came out of something very small is now growing into a, a big company that's actually giving great employment and really contributing to the Irish economy. Well, I'm delighted to hear that feedback. In terms of next year, you're with us again as title sponsor. And of course, next year, for people who don't know, Guaranteed Irish will be celebrating its 50th birthday. So a big event, black tie, RDS, double the numbers. We've had a queue, a waiting list for this year's. So (laughs) next year, we want to try and accommodate everybody. What are you looking forward to about next year? Yeah, well, look, I think it's a major milestone, isn't it? 50 years. Um... As I said, we our own history is is over two hundred. So these are big Stop milestones. Stop there, Patrick. It's and, not a competition. And need to be uh, need to be celebrated, really. Um, 
for me, I suppose what, I, I, what I'd love to do is to help you to even get more companies involved, you know, mm. and get them to put themselves out there. And also, I suppose there's been some great winners last year as well, mm. if you think about it. So how do these companies start to help each other and almost create an ecosystem where we have guaranteed Irish companies who you can reach out for a bit of mentorship or a mm. bit of help and to say, well, how, d- how did you do that? How mm. did you manage to grow your business to that level when you started small? And the sharing of that knowledge, because really the competition isn't necessarily against each other. It's actually, sure. it's Ireland, uh, well, with the, with the world or <laughs> against the world. <laughs> well, but, I suppose with the world or with, feeding into with the world. Feeding yeah. into the world. Mm-hmm. And, and I think there's great opportunity for these companies to help each other in the years ahead, because there are some real leaders out there that have broken down those barriers already. And it should get great ambition and, and courage to those coming behind who are brave, as I said earlier, and stepping out to start a business to believe that they can go on and do great things as well. Well said. And of course, there'll be a couple of new categories for the 50th year. And I suppose the big call is to make sure you are brave enough and put yourself forward, because the more people that are involved, the greater the network, the greater the opportunity for them to trade with each other and win more business. So for all people out there, I applaud you in your support, Patrick, but most importantly in your comments that put yourself forward and let's hear from you so we can help you help yourself. Patrick, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure as always. And I look forward to celebrating the Guaranteed Irish Business Awards with you for now and into the future. To learn more about permanent TSB's business supports, we will leave a link to their website in the show notes. And be sure to visit guaranteedirish.ie to see all of the winners from the Guaranteed Irish Business Awards this year. Thank you as always for listening. And don't forget to hit subscribe wherever you're listening and leave us a review if you like the episode. The Guaranteed Irish Business Podcast, sponsored by FBD Insurance, Ireland's largest homegrown insurer. Support. It's what we do.